Minecraft is full of different structures and even villagers that lie across the map, but we never get a clear answer that tells us how they got there or where they even came from. Well, by analyzing secret hints and lore put into the game, we can figure out what events happened before we spawned in the worlds and piece together the story of Minecraft. It all began centuries ago, before there were any temples in the desert or mine shafts underground. It was a new world ready to be cracked open like an oyster for whoever stumbled across it first. Oh, and when you look at that, there's the first sign of human life, some wild Neanderthals. They weren't Neanderthals for long though, as time went on they learned to mine and craft, group up together to kill animals, and discover more crafting recipes to make killing animals even easier. And it wasn't long before they went from living under the green top to having nice little cozy houses by the riverside to grow their crops. These builders were the ones that made all of the structures in the overworld we see today, like the giant prismarine monuments that they built to work and offer gold to the gods they believed in, as well as the huge mine shafts underground, which they used to collect all the different types of ores. But our ancient friends had a problem. They had become so ambitious and adventurous that the usual mundane blocks and boring modified jungle edge biome wasn't giving any more satisfaction. The ancient builders wanted something new to discover, and that's when a man by the name of Alexander, king of one of the largest and most advanced settlements in the world, built a working nether portal with his son, which is where our story really began. Alexander had more of a desire for adventure than anyone else, and he was ready to take on a whole new dimension. Before going in though, they went ahead and threw just about 15 pigs into the portal to see if it was safe, and only one out of 15 of them came back through. Alright guys, only one of the pigs survived. I don't think going in with just iron armor- wait, 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 wait guys, guys, what, what the f are you doing? Wait, are you guys insane? As soon as they entered the nether, they were taken off guard by a huge wave of heat, similar to that of opening an oven baking cookies, but this place didn't smell good. And after seeing a giant white cube explode some of the remaining pigs from earlier, he immediately ordered a team of builders to start constructing huge red fortresses that were similar to the castles they had back home. These nether fortresses would be used to protect themselves against the harsh nether environments and to serve as a place to settle in and store their loot. To add even more to this nether society, huge stone bastions were built to house pigs for easy food access, and several nether portals were built with backup escape gear to provide quick access to the overworld. Everything was going splendid, and Alexander was ready to launch another new expedition to conquer the depths of the nether, but on one dark morning, things would take a turn for the worse. In need of food for the trip, the king sent his son out alone to the bastions to get some pork chops, but when he arrived, he noticed something awfully strange about the pigs. Half of their flesh had had melted off of their bodies, revealing their skeleton from beneath, and a coat of green fungus lined the border between skin and bone. They looked dead, but they were well alive, so the prince went to kill one of the animals to see if it'd still drop a pork chop. Rotten flesh? That's weird. Wait, wait, huh? Because the nether wards the pigs were being fed was a fungus, it ended up taking control of their bodies and turning them into aggressive zombie pigmen. The prince didn't come prepared for battle, so he ran as fast as he could towards the fortress. Help! 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 The screams echoed off the walls of the nether and made their way to Alexander, who immediately ran to see what the yelling was about. Quickly looking through one of the fortress windows, he could see the horde of monsters chasing after his son, but before he could mine through the wall to save him, it was too late. Hang in there, son! I'm coming! As he got closer to where his son had just died, the blocks in the area changed from a red netherrack to a brown and mushy substance with what looked like faces printed into it, staring back at him, screaming for help. To his right lie his son's skull, which now turned from a concrete white to withered and black. He picked up the skull and gathered the blocks, which now held his son's soul, and went back to the overworld with the mission of bringing his son back to life. He felt that his cravings for exploration and power had gotten his own son killed, and bringing him back was the only way he could ever forgive himself. Despite his high reputation though, everyone in the kingdom began to think he had gone insane and didn't think there was any way he could bring back the dead. But the king was obsessed, and after multiple tests, he figured out that there was some sort of energy hidden in the soul sand. When he ran over it with soul speed boots, small souls would be released out of the soul sand, giving him speed. Not only that, but he noticed soul sand gives life to nether warts in a lifeless environment if grown on it, which 
led him to believe if he could somehow combine Soul Sand and his son's dead skull, he could bring him back to life. And after countless attempts of trial and error in his dark basements, he finally figured it out. Or at least he thought he did. Please walk. Please come back to me. Son, is that you? Even though the wither was built up of his son's soul, his real son was long gone, corrupted by the nether's energy. This is all my fault. I deserve everything I have coming. Come on, king, we gotta get out of here now! A few of the king's guards snapped him back into reality, and they began running without looking back. They didn't stand a chance against the wither or know how to defeat it, so they kept fleeing, leaving their kingdom and civilization to fall into shambles. After countless days of running, the king and the remaining survivors still couldn't escape the sound of explosions off in the distance, and they were getting closer. They knew the Wither wasn't going to stop chasing them until it harvested as much souls as possible, so they began to dig and hide underground. Although there weren't many survivors left from their kingdom, the few still in the group were able to build a fortified stronghold under the surface, hoping that the Wither would never care to search underground. But what can go wrong will go wrong, and they needed an escape plan if the Wither did end up breaching their stronghold. Alexander thought back to inner dimensional travel, just thinking about it made him sick, but he had the idea that if there was one dimension they had traveled to, there had to be another one. It was a gamble, but a gamble he was willing to take, to save himself and what was left of his people. He got right to work, and with the spare time he had underground, it didn't take him long to craft a new block, one which no builder had ever seen before. He then filled the mysterious block's pockets with eyes of Ender, and then... The first functioning end portal had been successfully made. As everyone filled up with joy, Alexander stopped and zoned out, realizing what he had just done. The sound made by the portal when it was lit was extremely loud. In fact, end portals can be heard throughout the entire world when they're lit. The Wither had found them and completely breached the stronghold in an instant. They had to get out of there immediately. Alexander tried to stay calm. He was thinking that because he made a portal with indestructible blocks, it would be able to withstand a full-fledged Wither attack and they can come back when they please just like the Nether portal. Everyone ran for the escape room and as the Wither finally got to the portal room, Alexander and his people quickly jumped into the mysterious void blocks, praying that whatever was on the other side was better than being blown up and having their souls harnessed as energy. And well, uh, let's just say that our friend Alexander isn't the luckiest when it comes to jumping dimensions. Some could argue that facing the Wither is a worse fate than facing the Ender Dragon, but keep in mind, the King and the few people he had with him barely had any resources. And after one of his men got smacked into the void by the Dragon, the King didn't want to risk any more losses. So they quickly used whatever blocks they had left to build out a way until they finally reached safety in the Outer End Islands. It was quiet, and the only sign of life were these tall chorus plants that they had to start eating to survive. And there was also these shulkers that were really just a nuisance. Now with an almost endless food supply, they went ahead and started building giant end cities for a temporary base to settle in and store whatever loot they had left on them. It was actually pretty nice. They didn't have to worry about giant spiders or skeletons, but they knew that they had to return to the overworld at one point or another. And they knew the only way to open up a return portal would be by killing the dragon. Alexander and his people immediately got to work once again, crafting any potions and weapons that they could from their leftover resources. After that, they began harnessing the power of flight. By using the Shulker's special levitation effects, they made huge flying end ships with dragon head replicas on the stern to show that they weren't messing around. They were going to fly these bad boys and their elytra straight into battle and take back what was theirs. The king took his place at the front of the ship, equipped his armor, and everyone refilled their saturation with the chorus fruit one last time before battle. <laughs> Just like the nether warts, the chorus fruit had always been a mysterious food, and after eating it for so long, the unknown long-term side effects had finally kicked in. They became endermen, developed teleportation powers from the chorus fruits, and completely forgot about everything from their past life. With the end of Alexander's journey and the death of his kingdom left, everything their civilization had built to rot away. But don't worry, it isn't a completely depressing ending. There were still some survivors from all the wither attacks who built small villages filled 
filled with different merchants and traders who vowed to never let their ambitions get the best of them like their lost king did. And for the wither, legends say it went back to its breeding grounds in the nether and ended up running out of energy, leaving its giant bones to decompose in the soul sand valleys. Which leaves us with you, the player, who enters the world to discover what the ancient builders left behind and to do what they could not. Whoa. Oh, my God.